OK, welcome, everyone. Um, so this is a session on performance appraisals and how to make them actual friendly. And it's actually originated in a book the two of us co-authored. And the acronym for the book is Bossa Nova, just because we like the term so much. And the Bossa Nova, and you will also learn this over the course of this workshop, um, comes from putting together beyond budgeting, open space, sociocracy, and agile. So it's like the first letters of those things together make Bossa Nova. However, it's not really the core of this workshop today. We only dive into one aspect of it, which is performance appraisals, right? So this is where we're going. And now I've talked already so much. So my name is Jutta Eckstein. Probably I should have started this way. Sorry for that. And I'm John Buck. Exactly. So, and we are from different continents. So I'm from Europe, Germany. I'm from the US, Washington, DC. Very good. OK, are you ready to just dive in? Because we want to get started right away. We want you to, oops, and now this isn't working. Why not? Let's go with, oh, now we have, of course, a problem. There's there always go. something. There go. Yep. OK, so now one question is, can you read this in the back? That's what I feared. The first tables, can you read yep. it? Yes. Oh, second table. Like till the half of it, right? Ha. This is so bad. So we thought we have like a screen. And really, I apologize. However, so we try it like one by one. We'll, we'll just read it down. Yes, right. We tried one by one, and we don't need this now, John. So we would like you to individually, when I read out a statement now, think if this statement is a behavior, an attitude, something that you are seeing in your organization. So if this is a behavior that's happening in your organization, <laughs> right? So I read, um, these are 10 statements. I always say like, number one, blah, blah, blah. And if this is something that you see in your organization, you note down the number and at best also maybe like a keyword so you remind, remember that later. Right. So okay? Yes or no with something about your reasoning. Well, I'm not sure if we have that much time. Okay, so ready? I start reading. First one. Leadership makes information open for self-regulation, innovation, learning, and control. I repeat, and you remember and write down, is this something that's happening or not in your organization? Leadership makes information open for self-regulation, innovation, learning, and control. And you just make a mark, a note down, yes, no, for number one. Now, number two, management processes set goals, fixed and cascaded. This is weird. It so, should be a that right there. Ah, okay, thank you. Right. Management processes set goals that are fixed and cascaded. Meaning at the top there's a goal and then it's trickled down all the hierarchy. So, right? Okay. Number three, everyone's work is connected with customer needs. And maybe you go on. Okay. All right, ready for four? Management processes are aligned are aligned to the calendar year. Management processes are aligned to the calendar year. That was four. Now five. Maybe we switch. Leadership restricts and controls information. Is this something you're seeing? Leaderships, ship restricts and controls information. 
Okay? Ready for six? Six says performance is evaluated holistically and with peer feedback for learning and development. Again, performance is evaluated holistically and with peer feedback for learning and development. Number seven, do you see this? There are often conflicts of interest between the customer needs and other company interests, such as shareholder value or increasing sales to the customer. So the customer might want something else, but you want to sell to the customer, right? I repeat once more. Seven, there are often conflicts of interest between the customer needs and other company interests, such as shareholder value or increasing sales to the customer. Oh, we should have done this right away. You just take a picture and then you zoom it up. I'm stupid. OK. OK, let's hear about number eight. Is this true or not? Management sets directional, ambitious, and relative goals. Again, management sets directional, ambitious, and relative goals. What's a relative goal? Well, it's one that's changing with conditions changing. Right? And it might be your competitors in relationship to your competitors or the market, but it's relative. Okay, number nine, we are almost there. Management processes are organized dynamically around business rhythms and events. So is it true or not in your organization that management processes are organized dynamically around business rhythms and events? And the last question is performance evaluation is based on measurements only and for rewards only. So, in other words, are there two separate ways, two se separate systems? Me performance evaluation is based on measurements only and for rewards only. Well, it's one thing, but it's only on measurements and rewards. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah right. Okay, it's, it's, it's one, one, one system. One thing, I, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want to put it up? Okay, what we want to do next, so we hope that you got something and you still, and we know it's kind of difficult, really apologize for that, but you got a little bit of time to reflect after hearing all of these statements and thinking about if this is true in your organization or not, right? What we would like you to do now, and I wonder maybe we make this a little bit shorter than we thought, so that you go together in pairs or triples and talk about from your reflection, just general, what do you see how this relates to performance appraisals? And what do you think are the top challenges by this behavior in your organization for agile friendly performance appraisals? And note these things down. Say, say it again. All of this is to well, we want to focus it on performance appraisals. As and by the way, what we didn't say, this all co comes from beyond budgeting. So these are beyond budgeting principles. So, you know. And, and we're looking at performance appraisals, distinguishing that from do you get a raise or not? Do you get a bonus or not? Just the performance appraisals. Okay. So, now, and now is a good time for everyone who thought this is not a workshop. <laughs> it's not the whole time like that. We also present, but yeah, we want to. You too. So, if you now go together in pairs or triples, share your reflection, and come up with like what you think are top challenges, key insights, how this affects performance appraisals. Look at the person next to you, one side or the other, yeah. and start talking. Well, yeah. Well, thank you, Chris, we've done now, five minutes.
and then we are probably five minutes over, and that's a still fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Some of them are pretty much in every country. So, third point there, everyone's work is connected. Would you consider uh, HR, admin? Yes, as well. They know how it relates to customer needs, yes. And actually, it should. No, no, we should go till 20 to pass. It's 20 minutes. Okay. Four oh, and five minutes. Really and so we will be five minutes over. So it's fine. And, and what about if you will ask them, so just ask for top challenges and insights, and I note them down and put them somewhere there. Okay. So if you can moderate your site, then. One minute warning right now. In my watch, it would be still two and a half minutes, actually. But maybe it's wrong. But you do whatever you want, that's fine. It's all fine. We're trying to be careful of time management. One more minute. One more minute. Please wrap up in 30 seconds. Start to wrap up, please. Start to wrap up. Wow, oh, thank you so much. That this works. We didn't explain it with the arm up, so very good. Okay. Okay. We would like to share some of what your observations were. What are the top impacts that you see? What are some issues that you see? Yes, here you, in the front, John. Great. You know, it's very fixed for a year. They become irrelevant after some time. So when management, you know, set goals for us for a year, after some time it becomes very irrelevant for the for the team that you know what is a yearly goal it's all about and they are not sometimes able to relate that for the entire year someone else i think uh, one of the key uh, points here is point number seven that there are often conflicts of interest between customer needs and other company needs right um there are many of often uh, it happens that 
the top goals of the top executives is around how the company interest to especially to the shareholders for example your revenue numbers and all of that the goals are around that and which get cascaded back down to the teams so i felt in the entire exercise if you know everything revolves around that particular aspect of it let's have two more so process not process not changed when the organization move into agile uh, point number 9 where uh, for example the hr department hr department and the appraisal processes remain the same but the team started working in the agile mode so there we see an misalignment of the processes as per the need support functions hr so and the delivery team as well so how they do performance appraisal and any uh, john so, can you repeat yeah he, he's saying that hr never heard of agile um actually at our organization we follow uh, setting dynamic goals they're not uh, very specific goals which will allow each individual team members to set their own goals but it will be evaluated and they, uh, each of these goals will have exit criteria uh, where uh, uh, team uh, sorry the uh, guy who is setting plus his manager will agree upon and then we 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 put it into uh, the system where we will also be able to evaluate based on what is the exit criteria so it is very good thing and it is easy for the communication also to the um, uh, the employee or the uh, guy who set this goal and there will be a clear um, you know uh, exit criteria where we will say uh, this is what is being achieved and then performance is based on that so you sent hr home huh <laughs> all right so we have some of these thoughts up on the wall and actually i missed the second no the third one just before the hr never heard of agile okay well you just putting those up there does anybody else have any other issues or main points well actually um i'm part of a large organization which is making a transformation uh, which has been actually on a transformation journey for the past um, Three years, and uh, we went from a, a, a stack rank based performance appraisal system to we are now into a completely feedback oriented, no ratings based um, appraisal system, which has been implemented from this year onwards. Um, we have um, we still have an organizational structure. We are not flat, um, but we are, one thing where we are still transforming is. Um, uh bringing in agile based roles as opposed to legacy roles of a manager and a team lead um but yes um yeah, we are working with hr on that um we are also another point i would like to mention is we we used to have a a a, a steady a, a standard set of goals for the whole year which we are now uh, aligned with our um uh, uh, psis every every 4 months we look at our goals and we're going to change them so we are in that journey thank you the question is and you to which do you have the clicker yes but you can also just push the button right arrow old fashion paste ah ha that's it is it german no nine nine you never know what the keyboard speaks um so what do you do if you're in one of these companies that the old way of doing things is in place or what do you do in a company that's starting to make some changes to be more agile on the performance system to make it even better you're dealing with complexity which means that you really can't go look up in a textbook somewhere and say oh this is what we do 1 2 3 4 you need to be able to probe because that's what you do with with knefen or complexity to try to figure out what to do so what's a sample probe so what we actually want to do now is show you two examples what you can do for performance appraisals and what you might be able to try and we just jump in with that and then give you some of the foundation 
Right, so we're jumping ahead and then we're going to go back more carefully and lay the foundations for how you probe. Uh, do you want to? I'll, I'll do this yeah. one, sure. So here's an example. In the probe, you've done some reflecting and you say, okay, we can see that the company values are kind of offering lip service and other values are often rewarded, like how much money did you make as opposed to how well did you take care of your customer. So you can come up with a hypothesis like a good scientist and say if customer focus is the foundation for performance evaluation, then we think customer satisfaction will improve. How do you know if that's so? One thing you might be able to do is to come up with an experimental unit. Maybe you have four units serving the customers. You pick one as the experimental group and tell them write your own performance evaluation criteria related to your work and reflecting customer interests. And you don't even have to get the boss's approval. What happens if that happens? And you can then do an experiment and see, oh, does customer satisfaction improves if we do that? So that's one possibility you can do coming up with a more edge of friendly performance appraisal. Another possibility that we picked out is this one. Oops, and that was too, ah, you clicked and I clicked as well. Uh -oh. That's difficult. Okay, another thing you can do as well, and I need to move because otherwise I can't read it. So often, the, maybe the mindset in companies is we need to provide a reward, otherwise the people will not perform, right? And so the thing is, the question we are having, will aligned individual growth happen without that reward? That's because that would be more agile friendly with not connecting this, so having it separated out. So often individual objectives are not revisited and if the market changes, the objectives might become out of date. Actually, a colleague of mine has this standing bet now, standing bet I think for over 10 years. And his bet is whenever he sees someone in a company doing something sorry to say that, really stupid, then his bet is probably there is a personal objective that drives that behavior that has been agreed upon with that individual. And so far, that was always true. So it wasn't then afterwards revisited and looked at and well, maybe this objective is stupid now. It was good several months ago, right? So it's not completely stupid, but now it doesn't make any sense anymore. But that person, of course, still works towards that objective, maybe knowing for him herself that it is stupid, but because the bonus is attached to it, the person would be stupid not to do so, to be very honest, right? It, I would do it because, of course, the bonus is attached to it. So, if we separate bonus incentive payments from the learning process, individual growth will happen in alignment with the company strategy. That's the hypothesis. So it is the hypothesis separating it out and it will be better for the company completely, right? So what you should do as an experiment, also coming up like with one unit, business unit, or one team and try the experiment, measure, and if it's working, you can roll it out. So the way John described it for the other probe. So if you have changing condition, increase the frequency of performance evaluations. And we heard your example, right? You said like you do it Every quarterly, I think you four, said. Four months. Four months, he said. Yeah. I, yeah. So some quarterly. So yeah. I heard it quarterly. Okay. Yeah. Right. So revisit because that's maybe the rhythm you are seeing where things are changing and where you feel you need to adjust, right? And. The other thing is use OKRs, so objectives and key results, which are more defined bottom up than top down. So this is also, I think that was somebody else who said that. I thought this was somewhere here. Didn't pay good enough attention. Um, so that it was that the team is actually coming up with something that's, was it you? Right. That's serving their 
performance and their value creation. So these are things you can try and we have already examples here in the room, but you're trying to get away from the traditional way of working. Yeah. We should go on to lay the basis. So I have a right. starting question. How many people in the room in their company consciously use probes to develop their system? Probes. Yeah, there are two. Experiments. A couple people. There's a couple of experiments. Uh, now experiments. Three. We see more hands up. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Cool. So why don't we lay the basis for that? Yeah, right. So first we want to look at what are the underlying values for probes and for doing, well, probably you would say implementing really company-wide agility because that is what performance appraisal is also fostering or hindering. And the values that are actually the thing that driving it are transparency, self-organization, constant customer focus, and continuous learning. And if you think this kind of sounds familiar or this isn't really new, then it's because it's not really new. It's directly derived from the Agile Manifesto, but made it kind of software IT free. But it's the same underlying value. And um, well, we hope you can read it. But oh, I spread out the cards on the table. And on the table, you see also the definitions. So for you, you have to turn them around. Does anybody not have cards? So there are these little cards on the table. So then you also have those with Make, you make and sure you can read them. Um, but still, I guess we should read them out, the definitions. Do you want to? Okay. What do we mean with that? Sure. Transparency. Create transparency for all involved in two directions, by providing information and lowering the barriers to those seeking information. So the interesting thing is it's a two-way thing. And it doesn't mean everything is transparent. That's not what's helpful. We all know that like information overload, right? It's, it's not helping anyone. But if you want to or have to make a decision, you should be able to find all the information that's necessary for making that decision. And that information is no longer like a power thing. Continuous learning. Always learn and contribute to others' learning. Get feedback and adapt. Ooh. Whoever has been here in the morning when Naresh did his opening and was talking about the law of two feet, that speaks directly to that one. Yes. And you recognize that. I saw that. <laughs> like, oh. Let's hop over to self-organization. Use accountable cross-functional teams that select themselves and follow their passion with responsibility. There's a lot in there. So it's about teams, or actually individuals, can, who can follow their passion, joining a team and working on something they want to work on. So it's not assigning people to functions and tasks. It's people select, right? But bound by responsibility. It's not that everyone can do just anything. It has to be aligned to the greater goal of the whole company. Constant customer focus. Focus wide, in quotation marks, on every aspect of the company. Product and process, structure and strategy, and individual contributions and people. That's a lot. Well, yeah, and that was actually the thing that came up the most often when you had your reflection on those beyond budgeting principles. So, um, was it one of you saying the most difficult part is the conflict between customer interests and other companies' interests. This was you, right? So this is often the thing that's the hardest, really, to get everyone aligned to the creating customer value. Okay, so these were the underlying values. Now, there's also an underlying approach, what you can do. And John, you started already talking about that, and right. so I think... So. 
we're not we're saying there's not a formula do one two three four but there is an approach that's like that formula it's the scientific method to come up with a probe to test what's true in our complex situation you need to reflect on your situation that means shut up sit down and think maybe you think with somebody else but it's time to just to step back and this is a very general thing for instance you can do it in a retrospective it's a time to sit and think and I want to say one thing with the retrospective at least I often coming from the edge of feel different than John often think retrospective of course these are my scrum teams or whatever or me being in a scrum team that's not what we are talking about well we talk as well about that but retrospectives can be done at all levels right with all groups all teams it doesn't have to be like a scrum team yeah. it's, it's a time to think yes which can have many formats so the, you think well what's our situation and this is important here let's look at the theory that's out there beyond budgeting sociocracy open space agile and other things that you pick up and say what does the theory say we could be doing about our situation the theory is very important and it says compare what you've reflected upon and what you've seen to what others have done and these are the probes for example the two we just presented right um maybe i jump back right now so that would be one or maybe i go for that that's a bit better to see so you have in a probe on the one hand the context that's the background you're in then the hypothesis you are coming up with however the hypothesis should always be in a way that you can also disprove it otherwise it's not a hypothesis if you always come up with something and you can tell well yes that's good I always knew it maybe then it's not so helpful then come up with one or several experiments and I, if I say come up actually what I mean in this case you can just use what other people have done like we heard from some people here in the room like what we've brought up already and we will show more examples from other companies just in a in a minute or so and just try that yes no oh that's a good point actually we refer to probe and I don't really want to go completely in that direction but for the people who know about it what Kinefin understands with probe and for here for this setting the probe is really the whole thing so it's a background a hypothesis and it's one or several experiments so this is a probe so the whole thing and um, maybe one word for in the re direction of Kenef and so probing is actually the only thing you can do if you are in a complex situation where you can't apply as John said earlier a recipe like do one two three and then you're there you don't know where you end up so you have to start with like analyzing what is kind of your situation reflecting on that hypothesizing and then experimenting and this is not unrelated to agile where you do a sprint for a couple of weeks and say oh that failed great that was your probe are we actually developing something that is useful to the customer that's a special kind of probe yes if the customer keeps on changing do we write new evaluations that's kind of the what I find difficult with that question is because it can go in many directions so it could be in a direction that you have a customer um, and the collaboration doesn't really work out and the customer tries to get just as much as possible out of you so you actually need to probe around the collaboration and the joint jointly working together so that could be a probe or if it's really that the customer and yourself you are uncovering a completely new field nobody has done a system in that thing in this field yet 
then it's really the only thing you can do, like to, to try. And then, actually what I prefer is then learn fast and not fail fast. And saying that actually we have a full day workshop on exactly this on Saturday. Uh, I think we should keep yes. moving. The, and the context of this, if you could, you do. go. the context further. is be thinking as we go through this, on your challenge, what kind of a probe could you come up with that you could start doing Monday morning? So be thinking of that as we're going through this background. You try an experiment and go back and reflect on your situation, but if you're a good scientist, you also publish to your peers. That can mean within your company, it can mean coming and giving a presentation at the next Agile conference, but you need to get it out there so that as others reflect, they have the base, they have your experiment and they can either try to replicate it or change it a little bit and tell you about what they did. So this process by publishing creates a network of people that are poking at, at this beast about maybe it's performance appraisals or whatever it is. You need to be working together. We now want to dive into these four values. Remember self-organization, transparency, constant customer focus, continuous learning, and give you a few examples, sometimes only one example of what can be done in order to put forward this value for agile-friendly performance appraisals. So starting with self-organization, that was me, right? Yeah. Okay, so we have from two different companies, one is Accenture, the other one is Equinor, which was called Statoil formerly. So first of all, Accenture, what they do is they have frequent conversations, frequent check-ins. So it's not an annual performance appraisals or performance evaluation thing. It's like a frequent thing where you can learn from each other how are things going, what kind of support is necessary for making the next step in your learning process. Then um, realign goals to respond to change. Well, we talked about this already, so I guess I can skip that. Then conversations reflect both like they go back to the past, but also go to the future. Now, the interesting thing, most often if we talk about, now I use that other term, performance evaluations, they are only looking at the past. Now, Accenture says, well, maybe it's not a good idea, and that's why they do it now in a different way. They say, well, we want to look into the future. So the, this conversation is more future-focused than past-focused, because you want to build up an environment that people can grow. And, and um, if there are people from Accenture here, I don't know, and you say, well, this is not done here like that. We have that from Accenture US, so, and we don't know if this is done everywhere, right? So this is kind of a disclaimer. And, and it's our understanding that they arrived at this after a series of experiments yes. or probes. Yeah, so it wasn't like we are doing it right now like this. Then from Equinor is that... Uh, oh, this is right away as we heard it before from uh, you here. So individual performance goals can be changed by the team, but they have to coordinate the change with other teams because if their goals change, maybe it has an impact on a different team. And if it's really like a big change, then it has to be approved a level higher up. So that's what they do. Transparency. How many people have heard of a 360 degree review? That means in most cases, people offer anonymous feedback about you and then they present it to you. That's not transparent. So, Andenberg Electrotechnique, which is a Dutch engineering company said, let's make it a real review. The, it will happen not with anonymous comments, but in a live meeting that has your supervisor, somebody who's at the same level as you, and a couple of people reporting to you in the room talking with you. It's like a retrospective in that each person starting with you offers things that you're doing well and that the system is doing well because it can be a review of the system. And that each person, and, and you go around on that, and then you say, 
and here I think are improvements I could make. And then they come up and say, well, yeah, maybe, but you need to be thinking of this or that. A quick question, which of these two steps is usually more difficult? Yes. Yeah. Surprisingly, it's often more difficult to hear about what you're doing well. I actually saw a manager one time break into tears because she said, I didn't know people could see what I was doing. So it's a powerful system. And then you say, all right, I think this is how I should develop. And everybody else consents to your development plan. And maybe they say, well, we object to that. And you work that out. And then you go back and you get your plan approved by the full group of people that you work with so that everybody approves your development plan. So, yes? I didn't understand. Repeat that. Repeat it. Right, they're right there saying it to you. So are you saying that it, so now it's not anonymously, but it's within that group and it shouldn't be go outside of that group? The, the, the results, the results of the experiments, the results of the experiments is that if you trust, you get truth. Yes. Right. We're only reporting something that came out of a series of experiments. There was another question or comment. Which goes in the same direction, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Right. The, the, we could go into a long conversation about this and try it out and all this kind of thing. We're simply reporting to you what you could be looking at if you're doing an anonymous 360. Do you want to experiment with this and see what happens? We're only reporting things for you to think about. And there's a lot to it. And maybe the first step is to only make the positive thing anonymously. And this is your first thing. So like think of in terms of experiments. Okay, uh, constant customer focus. So that's the thing that everything that we do in the organization should ch kind, some kind, some way being aligned to creating value for the customer. And that's not always obvious and it's not always what we are doing. Often, at least what I'm seeing, we are doing in company stuff where we are so far away and so disconnected from value creation. That's often also something where people wonder why are we actually doing it the way we are doing it? Well, because it was like 10 years ago, somebody found out that blah, 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 right? But we don't know anymore what it's for now. So the question you should start asking is, how does the performance support creating customer value? How does whatever you do support this? Then, does the performance inspire others to create customer value? That's actually directly from a, um, a company I know who does even um, Salary increase this way. So these are two questions they are always asking. So what's with this one person we are talking with in a 360 actually? Um, how does that person perform towards creating customer value? And how does the person help others to 
perform towards creating customer value, right? So it's not only an individual because we know we are better in a, as a team and in collaboration and going away from the individual performance reviews. And then as a team, and this is probably not new for you here because you know about lean and so on, but as a team, it's really helpful if you start creating or doing a value stream analysis and see what's really done, what kind of things are done that contribute to creating customer value. However, if you manage to have these kinds of experiments be done also in different, let's say, groups, levels of the hierarchy, then maybe something else is happening. Because you might do it with your, again, with the Scrum team, but it's not necessarily so that it's done whoever, I think, yeah, yeah, you've asked at the beginning, is this also like HR or so? Yeah, right? It applies to everyone. So what are you doing? How does it contribute to create customer value? One more example of results that you need to know about the publishing process related to continuous learning. There's a company called Cox Automotives that puts performance review goals in, ter in terms that encourage cross-functional teamwork. Somebody from over here and somebody from over there taking the initiative to get together. They learn the learning and adapting goals are, are, are changed throughout the year and they get feedback on goals and development. Equinor, which is the, the one of the major developers of Beyond Budgeting, uh, carefully separates performance appraisal from how you get money, bonuses and that kind of thing. They use the analogy of a 100 meter sprinter. You can be the world's best sprinter, but you still need feedback. We just took a video of you at meter 75, you turned your foot slightly this way, and then at 90, you turned the other foot the other way, and that cost you three uh, hundredths of a second in each case. You still could be the best time in the world, but you get performance pr feedback. And the process of giving you a bonus is an entirely separate set of questions. Do we all get a team bonus? Do we get individual ones? Do we combine them somehow? None of the above, we don't give bonuses at all. Those are completely separate questions from how fast did you run the sprint? Or how fast did you create value? So from the book Agile People, another thing that you can do is invite team members to evaluate their contribution to the sprint. So if you're sprinting together, how did you work together? Use the retrospective to do performance appraisals. Okay, so those are, remember in the, go ahead. we just went through examples from these four values of innovations that are done out there. And it's a kind of publication to you as input to your reflections. And actually where we want to go now is maybe you haven't seen that and also because it's not good visible in the back is that we say now here design probes. Beforehand it says compare to probes which are existing probes other people have done. But now it's about you coming up with something that helps you in your context. And so this is where what we want to do now. Remember the key challenges you found out at the beginning of the session and the impacts you have seen. And in small groups, like at your tables, I don't know, maybe at least two groups per table. Yeah. Did or also triples or so. It, it could be triples. Come up with a possible probe or several that can address the top challenges you found out beforehand. Using those underlying bossa nova values like transparency, 
self-organization, constant customer focus, continuous learning, and this probe cycle thing. So come up with an idea of what kind of experiment you can run and maybe it's your own thing or it's the one from your neighbor. So what your neighbor can do in the company to come up with agile friendly performance appraisal. Do, do your very best to try to make it real. You, can, you have control over trying it next week or whenever you return to work. So this is a real exercise. And at best come up with a hypothesis as well and then experiment to it. Hypothesis and then what's the design of your experiment? Two things. Uh, you've already done the background from earlier. What's my hypothesis and how, would I, how will I do the experiment? One other hint is that there's gonna be a lot of talking in the room and if you find yourself raising your voice or wanting to raise your voice, lower it. <laughs> okay? And that will keep the sound more manageable. Okay, let's try. Okay. So in triples at in, in In triples or four. Whatever you find helpful. Whatever is helpful. Yes. Help each other design your right. experiment. You can also, and there's a chair. And <laughs> say your hypothesis. This or the other one? This one is better readable from the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. The font is bigger. Yes. And the background, probably you have talked about already before, right? So you can, yeah. One forward, this one, which is harder to read in the back, that's why I used the other one. Okay. And you have a picture of the other one? That's speaking to you. Yes. Already, or did come up already with a hypothesis, and who wants to share it? What's an hypothesis for your challenge? And I see you got yes. something. Yes. Uh, and maybe you come with a mic. Because that's typically one of the, well, once you know your background, that's the next thing you do. You come up with a hypothesis. Oh, like ice cream. Yes. Right, um, so we literally just finished the typing the last word of hypothesis, so that's perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> so ha the hypothesis is that if we decouple the bonus slash payment um, with performance appraisal, we decouple these two, yes. and focus the appraisal on individual's passion and personal growth, then uh, we should be able to see a personal growth at a different higher level, 
as well as an alignment of that with the business goals. Okay, that sounds good. So this is an example hypothesis that they came up with, like separating the bonus from the performance evaluation, right? And you put more around that, what you want to do in order to see the personal growth. And the assumption is, if you separate it, you can foster personal growth. And so now the next step would be, and probably you just start working on that, is come up with one or two experiments, and they can be really tiny, and they might not go all the way, right? So, but it could be like a first step where you can prove or disprove that hypothesis. Right. That's exactly the. Yeah, and so you have you to say go. how you're going to measure it. How you make it safe for the people that are in the experiment. Very good. But I do have a problem with that as well. Okay, that's good too. Yeah, Hearing I, I, about I, yeah I have a problem with that because um, it's, it's, it's good and well to separate this before Mr. with the payment, but then that doesn't solve the problem of how to help the organization to determine who should get paid more and who should get paid less. Yeah, you can come up with different probes around that. We're struggling with that, so we, gave, we went, for ah. the, went for the easier one. <laughs> ah, so it, now I think for here, it's just come up with a decision where do you want to focus on now? So you don't, well, you will not create world peace now, right? That's yeah. not our goal. So just focus on one thing. And um, what I can do, because we have a blog article actually on that topic, which might not fit your situation, right? But it might give you a pointer where you can where you can look at for salary increase for providing bonuses. We'll, we'll, we'll write the blog address. Yes. Up here. Well, actually, it's on this little card. So uh, because if you go to edgeofbossanova.com, I think we have here also .org, which well, which you can't read anyway. Um, and there is a blog, and then. I th I think, well, you see it, the title says something about salary. The right, others okay. have something else in the Great, title. Great, thanks. I'll check that out. Um, yeah. But also, I want to use the opportunity to offer this challenge to the floor. If anyone would like to take that one as a pro to uh -huh. an experiment, <laughs> go ahead and tell me how that works. That's good, too. It's That's good. That's really good. Team right on the spot. <laughs> Very good. Okay, uh, so keep going and come up with an experiment. Oh, right. You want to share a hypothesis. Yeah. Cool. Sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, I would also read the background so that the hypothesis yes. makes more sense. So today, higher individual performance focus conflicts with the team-based outcomes that we are trying to promote. Uh -huh. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's the background statement. Yeah, that's, that's the background, the background. background yes. statement. Yes. So the hypothesis is if the performance evaluation of an individual will include team's aggregate outcome as well, uh -huh. as well as the individual's performance, then the team-based behavior will get some attention that we need. Right, right. So it's more on the value of cross-functional teams and so on and collaboration. Very good. Right. So now your your task is to how do we measure that? Yeah. 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 Part of the and, and how Very do we good. make it safe in yeah. case it doesn't really work? And, Anyone else want to share a hypothesis in the room? Or maybe you you now know also where to head after having probed those? Okay, so I suggest we keep going. Keep, keep going, yeah. Yeah, because at least five more minutes I think we can spend on that.
in two minutes. Actually, one minute and 59 seconds. 50 So take time to wrap up what you're doing. Begin your wrap up. Start writing your last sentence. You should be halfway through with that sentence. Pressure up, push the brake a little bit more. Hands up. Time to stop. Okay, would somebody please share their probe? Give us quick background, hypothesis, and how, what you're going to do. Yes. Yeah, you have to uh, get its ice cream. Yeah. Uh, Most of you love that. You can't eat ice cream. That's yeah, yeah. So, no, uh, we did not actually finish our whole probe. Uh, the whole background that, were, uh, that we started off with. Uh, sorry. Uh, the background that we started off with was that qualitative goals are really hard to assess. Uh, and the hypothesis. Sorry. Uh, and the hypothesis. Uh, okay. And the hypothesis was that uh, maybe a lot of frequent peer feedback would really help in assessing these goals. And uh, we didn't reach the experiment part, I think, but we were talking about uh, improved cadence, uh, uh, getting peer feedback from cross-functional teams, um, having some sort of a team happiness index, which would feed into these qualitative goals for assessments. Okay, so you came up with a hypothesis. Yes. Thank you. Somebody else? Here we go. Ice cream. <laughs> uh, so I think the background is. No, that you don't eat ice cream that far away. <laughs> right, right up to your mouth, as if it were you were eating ice cream. Okay. Uh, so the background is. Is it fine now? Yeah. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so the background is we are talking about performance appraisals and everything. Uh, let's talk about additional value that can be achieved and showcased in your performance appraisal that along with fulfilling my targets, this is something additional which I did individually and along with my team. So what I'm talking about here is regular team meetings. Just like we have a quarterly business reviews, why don't we have regular team meeting, make it a process until the appraisal cycle is near. Not just wait for the decision day. So talk about what I learned well, what went well, what did not go well, what the whole team can learn. For example, I did a training on seven habits of a manager. In my weekly meeting, I can tell my peers how it helped me to understand behavior, attitude, thinking of other peers around. And probably if my team member is behaving in a certain way, I'll be able to better understand that. So that cumulatively forms part of the appraisal cycle. And what experiment we are going to do, I think Siddharth can tell, like we discussed. <laughs> so that's the background. Now you get to eat the ice cream. <laughs> 
Hello. Right. Uh, so I think uh, we took a small example of a small example of um, of uh, how how can you implement weekly review. So if you if you've learned something uh, in a training, you try and uh, implement it in a uh, slightly lower risk, um, low impact kind of an environment, like um, uh, maybe an internal project that you would uh, use. Uh, this is where sort of my worldview is slightly on the tech side. So it's a little deferred, a little to puja. So, um, so any new learning that you have, you can try and apply it on a lower risk or a low impact project, and that would be the experiment. So you'd minimize. I mean, you don't want your flagship product to crash and burn because I decided to hack. Haskell over a weekend, so uh, poor example, but whatever. <laughs> so um, maybe use that low risk, low impact project as the experiment, and then do weekly reviews and see how you're coping with this new process or whatever, and use that as your platform for sharing your learning. Innovation day for PIs. Right, <laughs> not innovation day because that feels gimmicky to me. <laughs> So how will you do the experiment? Uh, how will you measure? Right, so uh, measurement, uh, not just success and failure of the uh, of the project, because uh, the, the, there's a lot of uh, uh, unknowns or uncontrollable things over there. But maybe uh, a good way to measure would be um, the learnings that you got out of it. And what, what practices did, like, so seven habits, were you actually able to identify and uh, observe and um, uh, and see those habits and, and were you able to uh, we just so to it's on similar lines on how we see progress in a retrospective or how we see evolution in a general retrospective that over a period of time there was certain clear patterns when we had issues we have started overcoming them as a team or at an individual level and now uh, the patterns have reduced where we saw the common challenges and one way you might improve that would be if you could somehow do a control group, some other group that you know, and, and measure that, and then you really have some, some data. Another one, please. Yeah. I would say that's the last one. Yeah, this will be the last one. Oh, oh, so, uh, uh, so um, I work for a startup. I'm employee number one uh, with a startup. And um, so... I was thinking that there is no there is no performance appraisal, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the hypothesis is if we set the performance appraisal uh, process in place, um, then what we want to see is we want to see individual growth happen in alignment to the company's strategy. So we kind of we kind of twiddle your words a bit. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm not at North. <laughs> um, and then really the, one of the experiments that we thought of was maybe that we could try um, talking about it a little bit in the hiring process to see whether or not that had a positive effect on recruitment. And how will you measure that? Well, I was thinking probably like a qualitative survey. A qualitative survey, okay. And will you have a control of any sort? Um, well, we could, we could basically see whether or not some of those Candidates that we don't mention it. Right. Yeah. Or you could look at what happened before the experiment. That's another kind of control. So we would like to do kind of a quick wrap up. First of all, lessons learned for angel friendly performance appraisals. So there are some things that came through with your experiments and probes, but also with the ones we shared from the other companies. So one is to have pers personal conversations and not having it in an anonymous way and written and something like this, but make it personal. Then it's more than one-on-ones. Remember the 360 that John shared? So it's more than one person, like a manager talking to the subordinary then it should be more a regular feedback thing and not like a one time per year, right? Then um, no long-term fixed objectives, but more like relative objectives, objectives that can change over time because they align to something in your conditions, in your environment. 
like compared to what does the uh, competitor do or what do other teams do or whatever. Then um, separate growth from the growth development from bonus. So that's another thing. Then focus more on future than on the past. That's, I think, a, a really big one, often that's forgotten. And lastly, which is probably even the most important, align the goals to customer value creation. So these are kind of the things that are important for agile-friendly performance appraisals. And now I wonder, how many seconds do we have? Uh, 58. 58, <laughs> like one minute, because I was wondering if we could do a quick feedback thing, how was this creating a throat, but no, you're saying no? I want to do a shameless commercial first. Okay, yeah, that's okay. more important. We, so it, I as, Yuta, as Yuta mentioned, first of all, we just got books. They just arrived. They just they, arrived. Like three minutes ago. <laughs> Woo -hoo! So they'll, they'll be in the bookstore, they look like that. Yes. The second shameless commercial is that this Saturday we're doing an all-day workshop that goes much deeper into this the concept, probing. the Bossa Nova concept, and probing. And it's about using probing for learning, for learning fast. And maybe there's one other kind of commercial. I'm not sure if it's really commercial, but we do have a LinkedIn crew. So, um, well, you can... Look it up. It's Edge of Bossanova on LinkedIn. We have here the a tiny URL, so you can take a picture if you are interested in joining the conversations that we are having around that topic. It's our attempt to create a, a way for peers to be sharing what they're doing across industries. So learn from one another. So it's not so commercial, actually. Not at all commercial. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, now, now quick feedback. We have well, 13 no seconds. <laughs> Minus, right? So we are over. I, yeah, right. So I think we just do it this way. We really hope that with the exercise you did, you got an idea of what probes can do for you yep. and that you can really use them in all aspects, not only for performance appraisals, for all kinds of things, and coming up first with a hypothesis and then with small experiments in order to start changing your world. So thank you very with much. With that, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.